Welcome guys to a brand new video on One Punch Man World. In today's video, we are going to be ranking um, Atomic Samurai. Now, I recently made a video going over why I believe some of the tier lists in the, in the community isn't that helpful overall, simply because it only focuses on manual play. So how I'm going to be ranking Atomic Samurai is based on certain ca categories as well. So I'm going to be giving him a general overall ranking, then I'll also give him a ranking for the AI, given a ranking for manual play, and then also give him a ranking based on the type of opponent he's going against. So if the enemy has um, high mobility, low mobility, and then I'll also give a ranking based on complexity. Not really like that important, it's just something that you guys need to know in terms of if this character is easy to use, and then I'll go over and uh, you know tell you that in today's video. So I'm gonna be doing this for every single character now, moving forward. So this is for Atomic Samurai. Next video is gonna be for either Saitama, Metal Knights, Genos, or whatever. Then I will make an overall video where I then just, you know, compile every single one of that. But anyways, in today's video, we're focusing on Atomic Samurai. Hopefully you guys like this video. Stay tuned for more content on One Punch Man World. If you guys enjoyed this video go ahead and show your support by liking the goddamn video and uh yeah stay tuned for more content anyways so my atomic samurai isn't the well she's decently built right now um this is my build for him the way okay i could improve his build because i want to get more penetrating eye on him to increase his crit rate however because he's a limited character, it's extremely hard to get his will. I don't even know if it's possible to get his, you know, will. Uh, what I mean is will, I mean his own specific um, composure, what's it called, composure crusher. I don't know if you can get this as a will without spending money because you can technically buy it. But since he's a limited character and I can't get it, it's a lot harder to build him as a unit. So unlike my um, zombie man over here where I can build him a lot more easier, uh, let me go ahead and give him his normal stuff. I had to quickly switch it out. Um, it was Raid Break. There we go. So this is normally his instead of um, Zombie Man. Okay, so um, yeah, like I was mentioning, it's a lot harder to build him. So yes, optimally, I would love to give him a lot of Raid Break, give him a lot of um, Composure, Crusher, give him a lot of Penetrating Eye and Mind Reader. It's just going to be extremely hard for majority of people to do. So this is how I have been able to use him. Sometimes I did switch out this over here for the level two one, just to make sure he has a full raid break on him. Now characters that are composure damage focused or oriented are usually extremely good. So when it comes to a character like Atomic Samurai, he is actually a very, very top tier character. Now, I know you guys are gonna be wondering, should you summon for him? I can't lie guys, if you don't get his, uh, or you're not gonna go for his impression arm, it might be a character you want to skip, in my opinion. His composure, I'm oh, sorry, his impression arm is extremely important and extremely good. It doesn't mean like without his compo um, without his impression arm, it doesn't become a good character. But if you have his um, impression arm, it is actually a lot better for him. Um, he is a great composure damage character, but he is not like he's out DPS in every single character in the game. So it's not necessarily a must have character. You don't necessarily need to summon for it. So as I go through this ranking, hopefully you can understand if you want to pull for him based on what I ranked him in. So for the AI category, so I have tested it out and I would like to apologize first of all. It turns out I was a little bit wrong with him when it comes to AI. So I have... I don't know if I'm going to show you the gameplay right now. I did a bunch of testing of him uh, with the AI, making sure the boss we're going against doesn't have an advantage uh, for um, what's it called? The type of element he is. Sorry about that noise you heard. I'm going to try and pull up the video right now, actually, because I want to make sure I, the enemies I did go against were not um, specifically geared towards him. No, it wasn't. Okay, cool. Perfect. Now, when it comes to AI control, it isn't as easy as saying this character is good for AI because he's a character that, depending on the opponent you go against, it doesn't matter. So, I previously mentioned how there are certain characters in this game where you want to place them in certain positions in your team. And I said Atomic Samurai is a character you want to place over here um, and your main character, even if the AI is controlling him, because he wants them to, he wants to do the counter attack. However, that is not necessarily true. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, you can actually move him in here and here, and it's pretty fine. He does lose out on the counter attack a little bit because he won't be focused too heavily by the enemy. Everyone knows that if you're here, you draw aggro to the enemy. 
But the thing about Atomic Samurai is the fact that not all of his kit is based on counter-attack. There is other characters that just, yo, he has to counter-attack, he has to time the blocking and whatnot, you have to be hit to work. With Atomic Samurai, it's not necessarily true. It's only once, once he switches over to a disc form that yes, counter-attack actually helps him a lot. When he's in this form, it is better for him to counter-attack because you want this. This over here is extremely good for him. However, since he's always switching this form, the AI is always switching his form, he's not going to stay in this um, little or idle form that much. So it's not necessarily bad for him to be added in his positions um, over here. So he actually does actually perform really good with the AI. Um, so that's another thing I want to mention. So in terms of ranking, my ranking goes from triple S tier all the way to D tier. So when it comes to AI, I actually have to give him a... Uh, a double S tier. I would say there isn't a character that I would say is triple S tier for AI simply because um, it's not, well, the AI typically just sucks. So when it comes to AI, I, like I said, would like to apologize. I thought it was going to be like a B tier, C tier. Um, but after taking a look at his kit, a, a deep, uh, taking a deep dive in his kit and testing him out, his AI is actually pretty good. However, it's based on the enemy you go against as well. So I have another category that is important as well if the enemy has huge attack range then it's really good for him it's really really good for him and the target doesn't move away it is extremely good for him because if he does switch into this idle form or little form whatever you want to call it and he if he switch into this form and he can't switch back it is bad for him because he can't move towards the enemy that fast he's going to be if the enemy is moving a lot faster like moving around erratic like a mos like the mosquito character or the vaccine man they teleport and move about he and if he's in this form he's going to be walking to that boss and essentially his damage overall is going to drop because he's not able to attack um yeah so that's something you need to focus on however um so ai double s tier manual play also triple s tier for damage i would say it's actually pretty good uh so triple s tier for damage um, especially if you build them appropriately now when it comes to a high mobility targets like I said it kind of drops off because um, you know they start moving about if you're caught in the wrong position it could actually affect his overall DPS so I had to bring down his damage a little bit or his ranking a little bit because of that so a manual plays triple S tier AI double S tier um, now for high mobility I'm gonna have to put him down to S tier because there is still an issue with that. You don't want to be caught in the wrong position or in the wrong form. If he is in the wrong form, he's going to take so many days to, to reach the enemy uh, before he can actually start attacking. So it's not really good in that regard. Now for low mobility bosses, he goes back up to uh, triple S tier. It's really good for that. He's really, really good. And also, if the, like I said, if the enemy has a huge attack range, it's even better for him because he can then, you know, use this counter attack or dodge that is actually pretty good for him. And then when it comes to impression arm as well, how good is his impression arm? Triple S tier. Triple S tier with him, with his, trip, uh, with his impression arm, triple S tier as well. Now, I also included AoE category. I'm not sure if you guys really care about that because we don't really care too much about AoE in this game just yet. Um, so I just put him at um, S tier because he does, well, yeah, dot S tier. I, I just put him at S tier. AoE is not really the, our main focus though. So like I said, to a quick recap, AI ranking, I put it at double S tier. For manual, t uh, manual, I put it at triple S tier. For low, for high mobility bosses, I put it down to S tier simply because you, if you get caught in the wrong form and you can't attack the opponent, you're just not going to be able to, um, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, use your abilities properly. And then when it comes to low mobility bosses, it goes back up to triple S tier. And for his impression arm, triple S tier and AOE S tier. But I think I might just remove that AOE overall ranking. Um, so in general, he's an absolutely great character. And um, overall ranking would definitely be like top top three, top five in the game. So he's definitely overall like a triple S tier character. So that is my ranking. However, when it comes to complexity of a unit, he is a high complexity character. So that is also something you need to pay attention with as well. You need to understand how this character works. So if you want a quick summary on how to actually use him, from my understanding, this is how you play him. So essentially he has two forms. Uh, you want to continuously switch forms because if you have his composure crusher 
Uh, let's go over to this. Basically, uh, Atomic Samurai gains 20% damage bonus for 35 seconds with every switch. So if you switch frequently, you can stack this um, dam um, damage bonus, which is actually very, very good. So you want to continuously switch. Um, and then go back to his skills. There we go. No more attack. You don't, you just attack overall. You're trying to stack this as much as possible. So the mark. And once you have five marks, you can then use an enhanced attack, which is right here. There we go. You always want to stack it. Perfect. Now his first skill, you always want to continuously switch over and over again. And you want to dodge as well. You want to dodge and counter attack. Very, very important. And then the second one um, is just, it allows you to stack the mark five times so you can instantly now hold after this so after doing this ability you then hold your um, normal attack and then he does the enhanced attack that you saw at the at the start um, and then when he's inside his other form he's um, you basically just attack that's fine but in his second form in this one you basically want to time it um, accurately it's similar to zombie man's where it's like if he gets hit he does like this he do like zombie man also has similar to ability to that as well if he gets hit it does an enhanced attack however you can also just use it as well if you don't get hit i guess um, if the enemy is taking too long to hit and you're just standing still with that ability just quick um, quickly use this again so from my understanding like i said to use this character accurately you want to be good at dodging with this where especially when he's in this form you want to be doing this dodging sometimes you might have to understand the boss mechanics and the boss moveset so that you can actually accurately use this properly um, but uh, yeah, in terms of complexity, is technically a harder character to use compared to the majority of other units in this game. Now, I feel like I need to, yeah, like I said, triple S their character. Now, in terms of like understanding where I placed other characters, like I said, I will have other videos on ranking the the specific um, you know SSR units, so you can see where they're placed in AI control, manual control, high mobility bosses, low mobility bosses, and impression arm. Um, like I said, sometimes you will notice that the AI damage does go lower depending on the type of opponent you go against. Um, he does actually perform extremely well against certain bosses. For example, Pluto, Pluton, Pluto. He's really good there. Um, which other boss have I tested? I tested him against this one as well. He's actually pretty good. Um, yeah, Pluton. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, Carnage mode might be a tricky one to use, but I've also noticed the DPS overall is always good. But yeah, as you can see, he does have a 40% increased damage against that boss. But yeah, in general, um, Atomic Samurai is a beastly character. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So um, yeah, it's been your boy AC Gamer, and I'm out.